Hello and welcome back to Multivariable Calculus, the video series where we do analysis with several variables. And in today's part 28, we will continue our discussion about extreme values. More precisely, we will talk about extreme values of functions with constraints. So this is the start of the topic about Lagrange multipliers. But as always, before we go into the definitions, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And moreover, please don't forget, as a supporter you can download PDF versions and quizzes for the videos. Ok, then let's start talking about what we already know about so-called extreme values for functions. More concretely, we would say that a given function f has a local extremum at a given point. And in order to visualize everything nicely, let's start with functions defined on R2. So we map R2 into R and we assume that we have a C1 function here. This means all partial derivatives of f exist and they form continuous functions. And now let's visualize one possible graph of such a function f and here you can see it's a surface in R3. And moreover, we also recognize a peak here, which is a local maximum for the function f. And for this maximum here, we have a corresponding point in R2 and let's call this one x tilde. Hence, we would say f has a local extremum at x tilde. And here please don't forget, if we say local extremum, it can be either a local maximum or a local minimum. Moreover, we have also learned in this video course that instead of visualizing the whole graph, we can just look at the contour lines of the function f. For this example, it would look like this. So you can say we just project the lines we see on the mountain to the plane R2. And then we also see that our x tilde is there. And now the big advantage of the contour lines here is that at each point in the plane, we can visualize the gradient of f at this point. Indeed, we know that the gradient of f is always perpendicular to the contour line. This means if we go into the direction of the gradient, we will increase the value of f. And this immediately leads us to our necessary condition we have for the existence of local extrema. But please note, this one only holds for C1 functions. And also, the domain we consider has to be an open set. But then under these conditions, we know that we can only find local extrema at points where the gradient of f is equal to zero. So it is necessary that the gradient vanishes. So in the two-dimensional case, this means that we have zero, zero for the gradient at x tilde. But here please don't forget, in general, this is just an implication in this direction, we cannot reverse it. Ok, so these things we already knew from part 18 and now we can start with something new. So let's talk about local extrema subject to given constraints. And to keep it simple, we still just consider C1 functions defined on R2. So we still have the advantage that we can visualize everything easily. So I would say, let's first look at the contour lines on the right again. So there we have the whole domain of f given as r2, but now we want to restrict it to this curve. In other words, this is our given constraint and let's call this set capital G. And what we will do now is to restrict the function f to this new set G and then we will ask about local extrema of this new function. In particular, we immediately see that the old original local extrema of f is not included anymore. Indeed, if we look at the picture on the left hand side, we see that the constraint g is a path on this mountain that will not reach the peak. However, still on this path, we will find a maximal altitude. So we want to be able to calculate this local extremum we find for this new function. But before we do that, we first should formulate everything in a formal definition. So we will say that we have a local extremum of f subject to a given constraint. 
And this constraint will be formulated as a function lowercase g of x is equal to zero. So this means the constraint we have in the picture is formulated as a contour line as well. So we always have a second function g defined on R2 as well. And then we just take a contour line for g and usually we take the one with value zero. And obviously this is not a restriction at all because we can always translate the function such that the value is equal to zero. However, usually we want that the constraint function g is a c1 function as well. Okay, and now this new name for a local extremum with constraints just means that we search for an ordinary local extremum of a new function. In fact, it's just a function f restricted to capital G. And please note, here in general, G is not an open set anymore. Indeed, we already know that G is just the contour line from above. So all points x in R2 that satisfy that g of x is equal to zero. So there we have our new domain and there we want to find the local extrema. However, the thing is that we immediately see that the necessary condition with the gradient from before does not help us here at all. In fact, on the whole curve here, we see that the gradient of f is non-zero anyway. Hence, what we want to find is a new necessary condition that can deal with such a new domain g. And exactly there, it helps that g is defined as a contour line in R2 as well. So the gradient of lowercase g is perpendicular to the line g. And this property we have for every point on our constraint g. On the other hand, we know that the gradient of f is perpendicular to its contour lines. So at each point, we can compare both gradients. So for example, at this point here, the gradient of f points downwards, which means we will increase the value of f if we continue here on the line. And this thing is true until we reach this special point here. Because at this point, the gradient of f is also perpendicular to the constraint g. And there we see, we cannot increase the value of the function f here by changing the point a little bit in any direction. In other words, there we have found our local maximum. It's exactly the point here on the left hand side that has the maximal altitude. Hence, now we have found our new necessary condition for local extrema, namely we have to find the points where the two gradients lie on the same line. Or more formally, you would say the gradient of g spans a subspace and the gradient of f should lie in the subspace. And exactly this necessary condition for local extrema is usually called the method of Lagrange multipliers. And at this point, we only have the special version in R2. But this one we can already write down and prove. And the overall assumption we need here is that we have two C1 functions f and g. So we are interested in the values of the function f, but g gives us the constraint. And now we are able to formulate the necessary condition for f having a local extremum subject to the constraint. So as before, we will formulate that with an implication. And the point where we find the local extremum, we will call x tilde again. However, here please don't forget that x tilde has to lie on the constraint, so we have that g of x tilde is zero as well. Okay, so now this means that we have a local extremum under the constraint at the point x tilde. But moreover, we need to add a second condition here because the gradient of g should span a whole subspace. Which simply means it's not allowed that the gradient of g at the point x tilde is the zero vector. Because in this case, it would not span a one dimensional subspace. So in other words, this means that the contour line given by g is equal to zero is well behaved at x tilde. So this is really important. We really need this second condition here. But then we get exactly our implication as we have discussed it before. Namely, we get that the gradient of f at the point x tilde 
is parallel to the gradient of g at x tilde. Which means here that they lie both in the same one dimensional subspace. So the only difference between them is a scalar lambda. So in other words, the implication tells us that we find a real number lambda such that this equation is correct. And there I can tell you that exactly this number lambda is called a Lagrange multiplier. So you can remember, in order to find local extrema under a constraint, we have to satisfy this equation here. So the question is, can we find points x tilde and numbers lambda such that the equation is satisfied? And if we can, then the points x tilde we find are the only points where we could have a local extremum. So still, as before, it's not a sufficient criterion. Okay, then I would say, before we look at examples, let's first write down a proof for this statement here. But both things we can do in the next video. So I really hope I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.